KC's Audio Vault. Mike Fraser, engineer for ACDC. September 3rd, 2008. Hi, Casey. Hey, Mike, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. How's yourself? Um, very well. Where are you phoning from? I'm in Vancouver. Is that your hometown? Yep, born and raised. And still living out there? Yeah, on the best coast. <laughs> now, your, your pretty big name is a producer, engineer in music, but a lot, a lot of the times that position gets overlooked by the non-music nerds. Now, can you explain maybe to the listeners exactly what you do? Um, well, as an engineer, I, uh, I'm i the one that sets up all the microphones and, and uh, records the band as they're playing, you know, put some mics on their guitar amps and drums and, and stuff. We get it all down to tape, and then as a mixer... Uh, I take all that information, you know, it could be anywhere from 20 to, you know, 103 tracks, and then I blend it all into a, into what you hear on the Stereo 2 track. So, you know, we take every instrument and make it sound the way we want it to sound, and the vocals and everything, and, and that's what you get. I guess uh, Brendan O'Brien was the main producer for the uh, the ACDC Black Ice. Now, mm-hmm. w- w- with something like that, it is. What does he do? Does he walk in and be like, okay, good, you, you set up the mics uh, right, Mike, and uh, the mix well, sounds good? Well, walks in, and he's more in charge of the songs and song structures. Uh, you know, the guys, uh, when they came in for this record, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many, but you know, they maybe came in with 20, 22 songs. So Brandon would go through those songs with them, and then they'd pick, well, this is really good. Well, okay, let's put this one on the record. Hey, I like this one. This one isn't quite there yet, you know. Let's put that on the back burner, and you know. So that's his job. And then in the studio, while well, you know, I'm getting all the sounds and everything. He'll, I'm kind of the go-between between him and the band. So he'll sort of describe to me what he's looking for. Uh, the band and I, you know, we've, this is fourth studio record I've done with these guys. So you know, I kind of know what the band wants. So it's just all of us working together to to create a record that we all want want to hear you know and you've had a relationship with acdc it goes all the way back how did you first get hooked up with them uh they came to vancouver uh to work with bruce fairburn on the album uh, razor's edge i think yeah that was the first time i've met them that's uh they came here to redo some guitars and some vocals and then we did the mix and from that day on they, they really liked uh what we ended up with and and uh our working relationship we're quite a lot the same we're quite laid back and you know, there's no drama around us, and they, they like that atmosphere, so I guess that's why they keep calling me up. <laughs> you take Crazy. them to, to uh, some uh, good places, some hometown haunts in Vancouver? We have over the years. You know, they've done uh, three records here now. So, But this this last one was, was pretty much all business. We, we did it pretty quick in eight weeks, which is fast for them. And uh, so and the weather was, wasn't that great here while they were here this last time. So uh, it was basically hotel room studio back to the hotel room <laughs> what's uh what's the longest record you've worked on you mentioned eight weeks is is not too long i did long. A, a coverdale page record uh and that took us a year and two months wow <laughs> so that was the longest one who, who else have but, you worked uh, with you, you got some big names on the resume yeah you know metallica aerosmith uh the cult <laughs> some dio in there joe satriani oh yeah a bunch of satriani stuff and ingbe malmsteen and G three and yeah, got quite a list going on. <laughs> Are you do you, do you play anything? Uh, well, I used to play guitar, and then when I started working in a studio and, and seeing all these other guys how they play, I thought, no, I'm hanging this up. So <laughs> I, I play the soundboard now. <laughs> yeah, was ACDC uh, and I guess the whole crew? Were you looking for something a different sound than let's say stiff upper lip for this? Were they consciously thinking, okay, let's go in this direction? Well, you know, they, they don't ever really consciously think of directions other than, I know, uh, the last record, Stiff Up Her Lip. Um, they wanted to go for a very dry, bluesy record and, and not so balls and against the wall type stuff. And uh, so that's what they went for. And I know on this one, they wanted to amp it up a bit and get uh, get a little more ballsy again. They they just write the songs and they just, you know, they just do what they do. Uh, and they don't really plan, you know, not plan, but you know what I mean? They don't really consciously go, oh, this is what we're wanting, this is what we're going for. It's like they just write a good song and say, hey, man, that sounds pretty good. Like Malcolm says, you know, like you thump your foot to it, then it's good. And there's a, a new DVD, the ACDC No Bull, coming out, and uh, you had a hand in that as well. Yep, yep. Uh, I think it was 95 or 96 we recorded it out in uh, Madrid. It was a really cool venue. It was an old uh, Bullring Arena. 
and uh, great looking uh, shots and all that. So we recorded and mixed it back in '96, and and when it went to get put into the video, the people at the video place decided they wanted some more audience or something in it, and uh, and did their own kind of remix of it. So three weeks after uh, we finished with it, uh, get a call from Brian Johnson. He goes, "Oh, phrase." He says, "What happened to the sound?" I said, "Well, what do you mean?" So they sent me a copy out. And it was horrible. You know, you couldn't hardly hear the band. You could barely hear the vocals in it because he's, you know, every time there's a crowd shot, there'd be all these big, they added this big giant crowd noise, you know. So um, they've redone the the video or the film to this now. I don't know if there's new cuts or cleaned it up or whatever, and it looks amazing. So they thought, well, hey, well, while we're doing that, let's let's get the audio right this time. And uh, so we mixed it in 5.1 surround and uh the picture looks great. It sounds great. And it's going to be an awesome package. Here on Power 97, we're doing an ACDC back-to-back weekend coming up, and we'll be giving away lots of the uh, new DVD, No Bull. Oh, cool. Can I get that online? Like, Can I uh, get your show online? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Power97.com. It's streaming right there. Oh, nice. Okay. I'll have to check with that this weekend? This weekend, yep. All right. I'll check it out. <laughs> We're uh, talking to Mike Fraser, Canadian uh, producer, engineer, mixer, helped out uh, ACDC throughout the years and definitely with the new DVD, No Bull, and new record, Black Ice. Uh, Mike, what do you think of, I guess you've, you've been in the business for a while and things have changed with, with digital music and the production has changed as well because it seems like there's less dynamics. Everything's yep. sort of compressed. Uh, how do you feel about that coming from a bit of the old school? You know, I, I don't like it. I think... Um you know, it's great that uh, guys can kind of do it themselves at home and all that, but I think it's really kind of dumbed our, our industry down um, because computers and, and being able to manipulate it uh, digitally, you can fix things that, you know, you couldn't fix before. So I think the plane level and the the quality of plane has come down so people don't understand that uh, you have to capture the magic, the magical moment. You have to be able to play it that way. You know, you can't just play your drum tracks once and then have somebody go in and chop it all together and make it sound properly. You know, you lose the magic in it. So I think in, in music there's a lot of magic loss, and I think people will try to um, overcome that by compressing it and making it really kind of jump out at you at the speakers, which can work great as a great effect, but, you know, just overall the song then doesn't really have, like you say, the dynamics, the highs and the lows and... And uh, so, you know, I think a, a lot of that's being lost in, in the music today. I think it's coming back around, though. You know, there's some bands that are coming out that, you know, there would be the backlash against that, and they, they're really good. And, you know, I think good test is, is how they are live. If you see a band that's awesome live, they'll probably have a great record. Are you a vinyl guy? Do you prefer to listen to uh, the old records? I love vinyl, but you know what? I, I haven't owned one in probably 15 years, so... <laughs> how do you stand with... Uh... I guess you're pretty pretty close to the bands and that kind of thing with with musical leaks because I just was reading this morning that Metallica's new record got leaked just last night and that's pretty huge deal especially for a band like Metallica. Yeah, well, I don't I don't understand how that can happen because you know the way me and and, and my crew that I work with, you know, we're pretty conscious of you know you keep it to ourselves like you know, we won't even play it for our friends or our wives or anything, and, and it just stays at the studio just for that reason. And it's and it's so more dangerous nowadays with the Internet and anything. You know, you can get anything and pirate it and put it up on the Internet, and then there it is. It's gone. It's it's out there. So, you know, I, I, I really watch that. I, I think it's unfair to the band and, and the fans by people that do that. But, you know, how do you get around it? Is there more security these days? You have to sign some sort of waiver and sign your life away, that kind of thing? No, we don't. But like I say, that's, you know, I have a pretty high moral standard, and I think that's why I get to work with a lot of these bands because, you know, we don't have to have any contracts signed together to, for any of that kind of stuff because, no, it's not cool and it's not going anywhere. It stays in this room until, it's, until you guys are ready to put it out, and, and that's real solid policy of mine. Well, Mike, I very much appreciate you calling uh, Power 97. Looking forward to uh, checking out the new DVD, uh, No Bull, and the new ACDC record, Black Ice. Yeah, it was awesome talking to you. Thanks, man. Take care. See you, Casey. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power 97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power 97 is Winnipeg's best rock.